front with the guys you brought back and then also the guys you're bringing in and the guys you've developed. Um, Coach Norvell said that they were pretty assertive today. Um, is that group, are you starting to see what you want out of that group this spring and particularly today? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, the way we design practice, you know, I, I think just be able to set the foundation of fundamentals and just the physicality necessary to play defense the way we want to play defense. And I thought Thursday was one of our, um, it felt like we were where we needed to be from a physicality standpoint. You know, it just wasn't always perfect, but just the pad level, just the aggressiveness, the knockback and the fits, you know, it's getting there and it's an everyday mindset, you know, but in order to be the defense that we need to be, um, you want to see that stuff show up throughout practices and then carry over to these opportunities. And um, it's come in a lot of different ways. You know, it's come with some additions. It's come with some improvement of guys. It's come with just maturity. And, you know, so we are taking the right steps right now. Chris D from Bulls 247. Hey, Adam. Mike Norvell spoke about Patrick Payton improving a great deal during the spring, specifically talking about him as a run stopper. Just wondering what you've seen of him through six. I think he's our most improved player, um, you know, on the team. Just and it comes back to the question I ever asked me. And you know, Patrick's going to be a good athlete. He's going to be a really smart football player. That's what he is. That's what he was last year. Um, but he had to develop physically too, with strength, um, just size, and so that that happened. But now you're seeing the physicality, and I think that's critical because there are no great finesse defensive linemen out there. I mean. It, it, that's not real. And so it's got to start with that, you know, stance and pad level and get offs and willingness to do what you need to do to set edges and take space. And so, you know, JP and Odell have done a really good job with him in that group. And, you know, I'm seeing that from Pat right now. Me and him were up in the office just this week, you know, kind of sitting down about where I think his growth is headed, what we think he needs to do. And he's very receptive to it all, and which is part of the reason you get better. You know, you listen to the improvement plan that's, that's necessary. Um, and, you know, he is, he is, he is definitely improving right now. This will be Logan Robinson from Logan Day. Hey, Coach. Uh, Greedy Vance has had a nice start to spring camp, it looks like. How did he look today along with the rest of the defensive back unit, even maybe some of the younger guys? Yeah, so a lot, lot there with that one. Um, you know, Greedy is, you know, this year we went into it and listen, Fentrell and, and Quindarius are new, uh, but the, all the other returning corners and nickels that are that are out there in the spring, Greedy, um, J Dub, Renardo, Bazarie, um, we're rolling on at nickel and corner. Uh, I think it helps build, um, you know, just depth throughout the season, but also I think it improves their skills as a player, put them in those situations. So, you know, we're playing greedy at both spots right now. But just his competitiveness, confidence, he's always been extremely quick and really ball skilled and, and really competent around the ball. Uh, but you're seeing a lot of, um, you know, I think we felt it last year at the end of the year. You know, we missed the bowl game, you know, when he got injured there. Uh, but, you know, coming out at the end of the game, I mean, at the end of the season last year, you know, he, he was playing really at a high level. And I think we've seen that continue. Um, he's put on some good size and. I think it's just year two in the system, year two with his teammates, and we're seeing the real confidence and greedy show up right now, and he's playing extremely fast, and I am proud of the steps he's taking. Adam, when, when we were talking to Mike earlier, he mentioned Duke Cooper, someone who's who's done well making that position change, I guess, through six practices. What have you seen from, from Duke, and are you liking the way he's settling in there at safety? Yeah, I mean, it's easy for just to grab the – the narrative of Duke now plays safety, you know, and I get it because it is a change, but, you know, it's not, I mean, he's still at DB, and, you know, he's taking some reps at nickel. He's actually taking some reps at corner some of the spring too, um, you know, and some of the reps that we're taking. So I think Duke's a really good player. I think he's a great teammate. And I think, you know, he had a really good freshman year. You know, he was banged up and fought his butt off last year, um, you know, lost some more than he won, but, you know, he's still the same person that we recruited and he's better than he was. And he's, I think the arrow's pointing up on him. You know, he's extremely coachable. Um, you know, and I think he's got a chance, you know, he had a one-on-one -on -one that, you know, he could have been in a better position today, uh, but he has taken strides through this spring, through tour duties, through practice, and 
Duke's going to help us win games this year. Hey, Adam. Uh, the, the, the newcomers in the, the secondary, KJ, Quindarius, and Fentrell, I think there was a day, was it Tuesday, they all had interceptions in the single practice. What have you seen from them, and what did you see from them in kind of that first scrimmage action today? That's good. How did you know they all had picks? I think, I mean, the mission takeaway confirmed it, but it was in my notes. Yes. Like, I was watching practice. Hey, a little promotion there. Good job. That was a lamp and a dunk. Well done. Um, you know, they've all done a good job, you know, and um, we had a good, you know, Fentrell, listen, we've had tape on him, right, of playing against college players and just through the recruitment. Like, I had a really good sense that Fentrell was going to, like, he made a lot of good plays in the ACC last year, so the skill was going to be there. There's a big part of it of just your fit and programming from a, from a character standpoint, from how you act and how you are as a teammate. And just, you know, when I jumped in that recruitment with him and just, you know, it was three weeks of every day, you get a sense of the person. So, like, I'm not a, I expect Ben Child to be in here and act seamlessly, even though I know it's a big transition. You move to schools, and I don't take that lightly. But I just know that, you know, he's going to be there for us, and we're going to be able to rely on him to play good football for us. You know, KJ and Quindarius, listen, we look at what's happened over the last couple of years. Kevin Knowles came in, started as a true freshman. Duke Cooper came in, started as a true freshman. Shaheem did not play at all for the most part as a freshman. Well, as a redshirt freshman, he's one of our best defenders. And so, you know, just because they come in, a bit, they're going to get the opportunity to play early, but some of them grow differently. And um, but then saying that, you know, KJ Kirkland, He's got a chance to help us this season. There's going to be a lot of development needs to happen, a lot of experience that he needs to gain from now until August. Um, but, you know, he's a really good mover, great kid, smart, um, you know, is, is confident, um, you know, and has the ball skill and the movements um, and the tackling ability to be able to play safety for us. You know, Quindarius, he's made really good jumps in practice one, two, three, to four and five, um, you know, you know, today there was some good, some bad, but that's going to happen. We're going to put him out there. And uh, you know, he's a 200 pound corner as a true freshman that's with good players. So they're going to help his growth. And uh, I'm really excited about all three of those guys. We're all at different stages, but all three hours are up. Matt Marshall from the Orlando Sentinel. Hey, Adam, how you doing today? Good, yourself? Good, good. I wanted to ask um, your thoughts on the linebacker position. You've got a lot of experience up front with Tatum and, and, and those guys, but what have you seen from maybe some of the younger guys that have been able to stand out a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we're really, you know, myself and Coach Shannon really pushing the Omar Graham um, because, you know, we invested a lot in him last year. You know, that's, you know, he, he, he didn't take one scout team rep. He took every rep with us, and that didn't show up on Saturdays but it showed up Sunday through Friday. And, you know, we invested in it because we thought there's going to be a really good player uh, in Omar this year. And we, we had our eyes on that. And, um, you know, through the first five, you know, I thought he's looked like a year older, which is a positive. And, uh, you know, he's got a lot of good factors to him. And, you know, he's somebody that I think has a chance to be able to crack that rotation. Um, you know, we've got some consistency at the top of the group, um, but that, you know, that younger group, we've got to continue to push, you know, and get better. And Omar's going to be put in a lot of those situations right now. All right, we'll go back to Ira. At the defensive tackle group, obviously, Fabo's had a lot of success, and Gerald Jackson's done a lot of good things. And uh, that group, Dennis Bray, I mean, you just have a lot of guys that have done a lot. How are you seeing them getting better this spring? Like, what, what ways can they still improve? Yeah, well, you know, as we say, the defensive tackles, you know, there are things, um, you know, as we get healthy and get this group together, we'll have things with four defensive tackles on the field like that. That's going to happen. Just like we have things with three to four defensive ends on the field. Like now that we have the right numbers, those things can happen. Right. And so, you know, within there are some fundamental techniques. JP and Odell will work with the D lineman and, you know, there'll be partnership drills that are basically carry over to both spots. And um, that's where you can really develop the groups in the depth, you know, like we do at DB. You know, there are corner drills or safety drills, or a lot of DB drills, just like up front at defensive line. Um, but that's such a consistent, you know, in the back end, if your stance in your first step and you're at 12 yards, is a little bit off, you can make that time up. 
you know, out front, if you slip with your hand or your foot is maybe outside the framework of your body and you're playing against a really good player, we're never going to give up on play, but you're going to be in a bad situation. So just the, that's why older players, you know, usually a corner or DB, you're going to play your freshman or your freshman year for the most part. If you got a chance to be a really good player, there are some D linemen, you know, that they may not play till their third year and become NFL players. And it's because of the, the consistency of the, the small techniques and the errors that you can make at the line of scrimmage. If you play against good offensive lines, you'll never get it right. Um, you can have success with poor technique and surviving against, against below average players. Uh, but what we're trying to get to as a front, you know, that's why I love Odell and JP because they're so detailed. You know, we could sit in there and watch a pod rep and it could be five minutes of coaching about a stance and the initial step. That's just part of it. And that's, that's the specifics that, that those guys need. And um, so, you know, it just, I really like seeing a guy from the outside, like a Daryl Jackson, who hasn't been in our program, but has played really good football, but he's not nearly near on tape where he could have been and where he should be. And we're seeing those jumps. Um, you know, he was really good in tour of duties and you know, we're seeing a lot of that, um, you know, that polish on him started to take effect and uh, really excited about what can happen with that whole entire defensive line. I guess to stick with that, uh, Coach Fuller, uh, Dennis Briggs, you know, obviously he's played so much football. I mean, it, is he a young man who simply is, you know, who he's going to be, or is there more left to kind of tap into him? And then Gilbert Edmond, could you maybe just talk real quickly about kind of, you know, how you project uh, him to be and how he's producing so far for you? So you think like, uh, Dennis Briggs just, he's done getting better. Is that what you're saying, as well? I'm not saying that, but maybe some conventional wisdom would say that when you've seen a kid play 1,200 snaps, you kind of have an idea of who he's going to be for you day in and day out. Yeah, well, I'm going to use some unconventional wisdom. Then. And I think his upside is still tremendous. You know, that's a guy that, you know, he's played really good football at different spurts throughout his career. And, you know, everything is in any, everything. And, you know, coming off that injury and, us moving in positions, you know, he, he did what was best for the team. Um, and I respect him for that. But, you know, I, I think there's a legitimate NFL player in Dennis Briggs. And um, I think he's an impactful um, piece of this team next year, and both on and off the field. You know, so I think um, I think Dennis has a lot left in that tank. And, you know, I, it's my job to make sure that we use him the right way. And, you um, you know, sometimes that you got to do what you got to do, and you got to put guys in a certain position to help the group. Uh, but I think there's going to be a lot of emphasis on, on Dennis as a playmaker this year. Um, then Gilbert, you know, I think he's taken some good strides early. He's still got a ways to go for him to play the, the football that I know that's in him. And, you know, if you just put him to a combine workout, you're going to take him every time. Um, and he's got good football reactions. Um, he's very hard on himself, which I respect. Um, but I, I think Gilbert is the one that's he's far away from his ceiling. And I still think he's going to help us win a lot of football games. But I think there's a lot of growth room for Gilbert. Um, and the greatest thing is he wants it. And, you know, he's not fighting it at all. And, you know, we've seen flashes of, of an impactful edge player. And uh, I think Gilbert's, Gilbert's got a really bright future here at Florida State. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Recording stopped.